So now let's talk about non-uniform circular motion. Non-uniform circular motion occurs when the speed of the moving object is not a constant. In order to account for this, there is now has to be a tangential acceleration added on to the path of the particle. And so the net acceleration of the body is a sum of the tangential component and the radial component. So AT, which is the tangential component, changes the magnitude of the velocity vector. Whereas AR, the one that we've been dealing with, which is also called the centripetal acceleration, changes only the direction of V. So in fact, for Newton's second laws, now can be written in two forms, one for the radial part and one for the, uh, for the tangential part as shown here. So sigma FR, which is the radial acceleration, um, part and the sigma ft, which is the tangential um, component of the acceleration. Now the tangential variables can also be expressed as a, uh, vt equals omega r, where omega is the angular frequency and r is the radius, and average tangential acceleration can also be expressed as alpha r. AT. Note that these are the same relationships that we have been using before, but it's just that their context is slightly changed. In a nutshell, if we were to look at uniform and non-uniform motion, the difference between the two is going to be, for a non-uniform motion, an ad addition of a term AT, which is the tangential acceleration which is responsible for the changing of the speed, whether the speed is increasing or decreasing. So now let's do this problem. What is the minimum speed of a car so that it maintains contact with the loop when it is pictured as given here? So here's a loop-de-loop -loop question. So here's my loop-de-loop, -loop, and it's going around in a loop, and it comes out like this. And the question is asking, what is the minimum speed of the car so that it maintains contact with the loop when it is in the picture given below? So here's my cart. As always, we will go back to Newton's second law, and we will write the force equations on it. Noting what will happen. So let's say the car was coming this way, it went around this way, it went up this way. So in this case, for the car, if I was to draw all the forces on the car, what will they be? Well, there, this is a contact point, so my normal force acts downwards. There is a mg, which is going to also act downwards. And there is a center seeking force, which is the centripetal force, which is also downwards. Okay? So if I was to write my force equations, sigma fx and sigma fy, do I have anything along the x axis? Not really. So I can just pretty much ignore that. But according to this, my fy will be n, and if I take my coordinates to be this, so let's say this is plus and this is plus, this will be minus n minus mg. And that should equal my center seeking force, right, and on this side. So this will be equals to minus m, oops, my m minus looks funny, minus mv squared over r, which is equals to minus m minus mg, okay? So since they're all minus signs, I can get rid of them. And I'm left with m v squared over r equals n plus mg. Okay, note what is happening. The question is asking me, what is the minimum speed for the car so that it maintains contact? So if it was less than that minimum speed, the object will fall, at which point the n that's given here will go to zero, right? Because the object is now falling, 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 okay? So that means this goes to zero. What am I left with? V squared m over r equals mg. If I do a little bit of algebra, I can rewrite this expression as V squared equals rg. Get rid of the square, so I can do that. Okay? Just by knowing the radius, I can pretty much figure out what's the minimum speed I need in order to cover that track. Another point to be noted here, is mass of the cart plays very minimal effect. So for most of the time, it's the speed that's going to, the, the radius of, uh, of the circle is going to determine what the whole equation is going to do. Now what if I change this question? And I ask you instead, what about if your cart was here? 
what will the normal force on that expression will be? So in this case, note how things change. Since this is the point of contact, your normal force is going to be upwards. Your value of G is now going to be downward, and your center seeking force will also be upwards. So sigma Fy in this case is going to be N minus Mg. And your center seeking force is plus N minus Mg. You see how the equation changes? The little subtle differences between this part and this part, there was a minus here, there isn't one, and plus and minuses. Forces don't necessarily change. Only where they are placed changes. Okay? So be very careful when you're doing these problems. So for both tangential and accel uh, angular accelerations, we can write these formulas and be assured that these are actually true. So the average angular acceleration will be given by delta omega over delta t, where omega is the uh, velocity, angular velocity, and the instantaneous angular acceleration will be given by delta omega over delta t in the limit delta t goes to zero, where alpha now is going to be measured in radians per second squared. So here in a nutshell are all the conversions from one dimensional linear kinematics to angular um, kinematics. So alpha is a constant, A is always going to be a constant. Ex these equations will hold true only and if only um, your uh, um, accelerations are constant. So you can figure out that the, there is direct relationship between these uh, equations of motion. And for a point at a distance r from rotation axis, we know s, which is the arc length, equals r theta, v equals omega r, and a equals alpha r. So now let's do a problem um, using the information that we've learned. A high speed drill is rotating at 3.14 times 10 to the 4 radians per second. Through how many degrees does this drill rotate in one second? So the question here says high speed drill is rotating at 3.14 times 10 to the power 4 radians per second. If I don't know anything about what that means is rotating, I can read radians per second which gives which tells me it is a unit of omega. Now the question is, through how many degrees does the drill rotate? So it's asking me delta theta is what I am looking for. And it's also telling me that A equals zero radians per second squared. So alpha equals zero radians per second squared. How do I know this? Because if it wasn't true, then it would give me an initial and a final velocity, initial and a final angular velocity, okay? So how do I find this? Well, we have equations of motions, and we need to pick which one we want, okay? So looking at all the equations of motions that we possibly can use, which one do you think we should be using here? Yes, I think I will use a number two here. So which means I have delta theta, which is equals to omega naught t plus half alpha t squared. So delta theta is what I'm looking for. Alpha is equals to zero. Omega equals 3.14 times 10 to the 4 radians per second. And it also gives me t is 1 second. So I can plug that value in here and solve for it, and I get 3.14 times 10 to the 4 radians. Okay. Additionally, on top of that, I want to see, show you how to convert radians into degrees. So let's try doing that. So I know uh, for a fact that in one complete circle, there are 2 pi radians, right? and there are 360 degrees. So if I was to convert radians into degrees, how would I do it? So one radian equals 360 degrees divided by two pi. So in order to convert this into radians, I have to do 3.14 times 10 
to the 4 radians times, I need to have radians at the bottom, so 2 pi radians in 360 degrees. So radian gets canceled with radians, and I have 360 into 2 pi times this number right here, which comes out to be, I believe, 1.8 times 10 to the 6 degrees. That's a lot. Now, the, ne the next question says your car's wheels are 65 centimeters in diameter and are spinning at 101 radians per second. How fast in kilometers per hour is a car traveling? Assume no slipping. Okay, now this is a very interesting question. First, first, let's write down all of the information that the car is giving me. So I have a wheel and the diameter of my wheel is 65 centimeters, right? So diameter is 65 centimeters. That means my radius is 32.5 centimeters. So this is centimeters. I have to convert it into meters, which means it's 0 0.325 meters, right? Okay. Uh, now it's saying that, and they are spinning at omega equals 101 radians per second. And I have to find how fast in kilometers per hour am I going, okay? So this is my problem. No, I'm going to do this two different ways. I know a formula, V equals R omega for things going in a circle, right? So all I need to do is figure out what my R is, plug it in, and be able to solve it. However, I will come up with another way to come up with V equals R omega. So what do I know? V is the distance traveled, or the displacement, divided by time. I know if my wheel starts here and comes back, goes around and comes back over here, the distance that it travels is 2 pi r. And the period, because I know for one complete revolution it's called a period, it's t. Agree? Okay. Now, what is 1 over t? 1 over t, by definition, is frequency. So I can put that down in here, and I can rewrite this as 2 pi f r, because I just put in the value of 1 over t. This I know is equals to omega. So v calculated is going to be r omega. Isn't that interesting? Starting from the definition of v, coming up with the same expression that I already know from, from this chapter. Okay, so this means all I have to do is place 0.325 meters in here and 101 radians per second here and solve it in order to get my answer in meters per second. And I believe the answer comes out to be 32.8 meters per second. We should be done here. But, however, our question is asking us, what's the answer in meters, uh, in kilometers per hour? Now, we need to be able to convert meters, to meters per second into kilometers per hour. It's easy. How do I know? I need to divide it by meters, so I have kilometers in at the top, and then I need to convert seconds into hours. How many seconds in a minute times how many minutes in an hour, okay? So, in one kilometer, there are a thousand meters. In one minute, there are 60 seconds. And in one hour, there are 60 minutes, okay? This means my minutes get canceled, my kilometers, oops, my, my kilometers stay, my seconds get canceled, and my minutes get canceled. And I, uh, am, I end up with 32.8 times 60 times 60 divided by 1,000 kilometers per hour. This goes away, this goes away, this goes away, this goes away. Plug it into your calculator and come up with an answer. I believe my answer comes out to be around 118 kilometers per hour.